Good morning. I'm the Reverend Joe Pagano. I'm the Reverend Amy Richter. And this morning we're going to talk a little bit about preparing for the sermon on Sunday. So Amy, uh, this Sunday you are preaching. I am. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you're planning on focusing on? Thank you. Yes, I am going to do something a little bit different for me this week. I am going to preach on the psalm. I usually start uh, by looking at the gospel lesson and thinking about that and, and then the other lessons in light of that. But the psalm this week is really speaking to me. So I think it's what I should prepare to uh, bring to the congregation as well. Um, psalm 90 isn't as well known as, as some of the other psalms. So just uh, for our purposes here, I, I'm, I'm going to read through it and um, so everyone can hear it. This is the whole of Psalm 90. In our lectionary for this week, uh, some of the verses get skipped, but here's the entire psalm. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday, when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, in the evening it fades and withers. For we are consumed by your anger, by your wrath we are overwhelmed. You have set our iniquities before you our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days pass away under your wrath. Our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are 70 years, or perhaps 80, if we are strong. Even then their span is only toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger? Your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. So teach us to count our days, that we may gain a wise heart. Turn, O Lord, how long have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us, and as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be manifest to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper for us the work of our hands. O oh, prosper the work of our hands. That is Psalm 90. Thank you. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about um, what you think this psalm's about? Yeah. Um, uh, it's so interesting, like a lot of Psalms, what it, it does is it tells us something about God, then something about how the, the writer of the Psalm sees human reality, the situation that humans are in, and asks something of God. And it either um, resolves into praise or prayer or sometimes a combination. And this Psalm fits fits that pattern as well. And you heard in it that it's about uh, the passing of, of time and compares the eternal creator God, who is our God, with the shortness and fleetingness of, of human life. And um, then asks some questions about that and, and prays about that. One little note. Uh, I think the reason it was chosen for this Sunday is that the first lesson that we hear is about the death of Moses. And this psalm has been remembered in, in tradition as a psalm of, of Moses. Usually the psalms are, are said in tradition to be psalms of David, but here's one that's, that's attributed to Moses instead. And I think it's a good fit. So in our reading for this week, we'll hear about Moses' death. Um, he lived in 
according to the, the story, he lived 120 years. And that sounds like pretty long to me. <laughs> I know, um, given the story of Moses, I think at some points that felt pretty long to mm -hmm. Moses too. We know of at least, I can think of at least one story where Moses is like, that's enough God, I've had it, take me now, I can't, I can't do this anymore, just end my life. But God lets him live 120 years. He's, he has work for mm -hmm. Moses to do. But here's Moses, he, he leads people to the promised land but he himself doesn't enter it. His time runs out. God says that's it. Uh, before he enters the promised land. And certainly uh, Moses saw that uh, human life was, was fleeting. People mess up and their, their life is brought to an end before they reach uh, maybe the goals that they have at least, and, and that was the case for Moses too. So I, I think there's that, that connection with Moses and that sense of, uh, of life being too, too short for humans, in, in humans' point of view. So the psalm moves through um, a beginning telling us about God. God, you have been our dwelling place forever. Um, you're the eternal creator God, but so that's the, the beginning, and then the next section is about, yeah, but our life is so short. You know, we're like grass. In the morning, it's, it's beautiful, it's green, and by the evening, it's, it's withered, it's life is over. It's, it's way too short. Um, so then the psalmist says, well, why is that? Why is human life short and fleeting? And, and this is the part that our lectionary skips over. And the, the psalmist's answer is because our guilt and our sin are great. And God, in God's displeasure, limited our life. This was not the way it was supposed to be. God's plan was not that our life would, would be short and fleeting. But here it is. Um, humans have, have not lived according to God's plan. And so our, our lives are, are short. Um, there's a great line about um, a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. Uh, what seems like forever for us is just a blink of the eye to God. So, um, so then the, the psalmist prays, well, we want your help now, God, um, but our now and God's now might be really different, right? Um, I'm reminded of the expression that we heard some people use in South Africa, um, now and now now, mm -hmm. right? So now, just one now uh, means sort of presently. I'll, I'll do this now, I'll do this presently, we might say, um, versus I'll do this now now, which is my now. <laughs> I'll do this right away. And I think part of the thing the psalmist is, is uh, struggling with is, I, I need your help in my now, God, not in, you know, what if God says I'll help you tomorrow, and that's like 3,000 years from now. Um, it, can our time and our short life and God's eternal spans of time come together in a way that that is helpful for human beings? So after the psalmist says, you know, uh, We've messed up, our lives are short, God and God's displeasure has, has made our lives so fleeting. The psalmist um, prays, and prays for a lot of things, starting with, teach us to number our days that we may gain wisdom. God, help us be aware of the shortness and fleetingness of our lives. And by, by having that awareness, by being aware of that, um, we might actually kind of recenter our priorities. And I think a number of us have had that experience, right? Mm -hmm. that, that can be a, a gift of going to a funeral um, or just um, anything else that makes us aware that you know, life, life may be even shorter than, than we think it is. So help us use that time wisely um, and not just squander time or, or take it for granted. Then um, the psalmist says, uh, turn, O Lord, 
uh, in the translation we'll say together on Sunday, it's, it's don't, do not tarry, don't wait to help us, help us now, in our now, please, God. Show us your loving kindness now. Um, give us good years too. For, please, for every bad time we have, may we have some, some good time as well. And the psalmist asks that God would show us God's works. Um, that being able to see what God is up to is helpful to us, even in our short lives. The psalmist uh, prays for God to be gracious to us during the time that we have. May we experience God's grace. And then the last thing the psalmist prays, in, in English it's, it's translated, uh, prosper our works, prosper the works of our hands. Um, the, the word, that's fine, but the, the word is more like establish. It's, it's used also to describe building projects that will last. So um, help us to see, help us be dedicated to things that are lasting in contrast to our fleeting lives. So I think that's, that's an overview of, of what the psalm is saying. Mm. Well, it seems like there's um, lots of important things <laughs> in that psalm. Um, what do you think it's saying to us today? Yeah, I, I don't know what will finally make it into the sermon, which I need to prepare now, now. <laughs> Time is fleeting. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, I think part of the reason this psalm is speaking to me today is I think right now there are some ways that I know for me this is true. I've heard other people talk about this too, so I don't think this is just unique to me. During this pandemic, people are describing experiencing time in a different way. We've got both the kind of unmooring of time when some of our regular routines and patterns have been upended, right? People haven't had the same holidays that they've had in the past. They haven't gotten to see their family members at the times that they have in the past. They don't know when they'll get to see their family members. Um, and that's weird and unmooring. I remember, you know, before we were able to worship together in person, um, we would watch worship, participate that way online, but without having Sundays to anchor our weeks by getting up and getting dressed and going to church and spending a, that time in that way, I had weeks when I didn't really know what day it was. And that's, that's an odd way, and I, I know lots of people describe that too. And we also don't know when this time will be over. We don't know when this pandemic is coming to an end. Um, several things have been held out for us, you know, well maybe uh, when the warm weather comes. Well, it didn't it. Uh, we'll have a vaccine. We don't have a vaccine yet. Well, maybe we'll get ahead of this. Well, we're not there yet, and the numbers are rising. Well, maybe it'll be next year. Um, the uncertainty of how long this will go on, I think, also um, messes with our sense of time in a way. So I think one of the things that the psalm holds out to us is to remember that yeah, time for us is, is two things. It's, it's a gift, and we don't ultimately control it. And our time is held within God's eternal time. And that's a reason for hope. The shortness of our life could be a reason for despair, but the psalmist, especially through this prayer and the recognition of human reality, and the reality of God's eternity says, don't despair, um, here's a prayer. And I think that ending with um, prosper the work of our hands, uh, establish what we do, make it, make it worthy of being lasting in some way, I think is also another message for us. We can by gaining that wisdom, 
of realizing that our lives are short in the eternal scheme of things and that God is present with us throughout means that we actually can at least try to dedicate what we do um, to some almighty everlasting purpose even if we won't get to see the end of that even if even if we don't get even what Moses got, a glimpse. And I think a lot of us can already resonate with that. I think of teachers who are busy planting seeds that we never see how they turn out. And parents do that too, right? Um, good parents and godparents plant those seeds and, and hope. Um, we can all do that. And I think that's an important message of this song. Yeah, thanks, Amy. That uh, what you just said uh, reminds me of um, that uh, famous quotation from Reinhold Niebuhr, uh, where he says, uh, "Nothing that is worth doing can be achieved in our lifetime. Therefore, we must be saved by hope. Nothing which is true or beautiful or good." makes complete sense in any immediate context of history. Therefore, we must be saved by faith. Nothing we do, however virtuous, can be accomplished alone. Therefore, we must be saved by love. Beautiful. Thank you. Mm, thank you.